Hello friends, it's Kayla. I think everybody knows at this point how much I love tracking my reading and sharing stats and keeping track of everything like physically. I love the physical act of writing stuff down. I don't like to track my stats on the internet. I don't love using spreadsheets. I don't even keep an online calendar. Like I have a physical calendar agenda that I use every single day. I've kept a bullet journal for years and years. There was one year where I really went hard with it and did like full out designs, which isn't really something that I even enjoy keeping up with, but I did it for a short time in my life and it was fun. Right now, the way that I use my bullet journal to track my reading is just I have this one big spread that I color in the books as I read them. And other than that, I just have really boring pages where I write out a little bit of my review and then like track stats on other pages. I've never had a proper reading journal before, but I've always been very intrigued by them. So I thought in this video, we would try four different reading journals and I've actually already tried them over the last four months. I used one for the entire month of each month and then I vlogged the experience and let you know what I thought, my initial impressions, and then my review for each one at the end. I wanted to do this for myself to find reading journals that I enjoy. Um, one of my very first videos on this channel ever was a video where I talked about all of my favorite like activity journals. I love them. I've always loved filling out quizzes. I've always loved keeping a physical journal and writing notes and all that stuff. So I was on the hunt to find the perfect reading journal and also I thought it might be helpful to some of you because it'll help you know the quality before you buy or even the insides because a reason that I never picked up a reading journal is I feel like the online listings often don't show you the inside much at all and sometimes you don't really know what you're in for. So instead of reviewing books today, I'm reviewing reading journals. The four I decided to pick up are my bibliophile, bookaholic, a reading journal, bookmarks, a reading tracker by Book Riot, and reading planner by Owl Crate. And I would love to hear if you use a reading journal, let me know in the comments below what you thought of yours, if you enjoyed, if you found one you like, if you found ones you hated. And now we will jump back in time four months ago where I just blabber more about my love of reading and journaling. <laughs> it's January and the first one that I wanna get into is one of the OG reading journals, it's called My Bibliophile, a reading journal for book lovers. This originally came out in like 2010, so it has been around. I found it on Indigo for $15.99 and then without my like black card that I pay for every year to get free shipping, it would have been $7 shipping for a total of almost $25. I already see some pros and cons with this one. I feel like I'm gonna lose a lot of people right off the bat because my pickiness when it comes to the structure of notebooks is a lot. So first of all, I don't love that it's hardcover. I feel like I'm not going to be able to fully open it and spread the page the way that I would like to. First, let me show you my two preferred notebook things that I go for. These are not reading journals, but when it comes to structure and binding, the Leuchterm um, bullet journals in the slim version are my favorite. The way you can fully open it up and lay it perfectly flat. I enjoy the paper quality. I like that it's a soft, cover but not like super bendy and then this is what I get every single year as my like pocket calendar that I can slip into my bag this is the orange circle studio and this has a much softer cover but it still has a really good structure to it and this is my preferred binding I guess where it is a really bendable spine and this one you can lay perfectly flat as well. In the bullet journals I use you can see that it's a little more separated from the spine and this one also has that. So I do enjoy that. I'm definitely most curious about the paper quality. It feels a little glossier than I would like for the pens that I prefer to use. Some paper is more conducive to pens and some is more conducive to pencils. I like to use these equally and I think I will want to use both of them in a reading journal. So I wanna see how the pens perform. I do quite enjoy the size of this. There are five opportunities for a book review. And then there is like 
a fun page, an activity page. And then there's five more reviews. Each review is an entire spread, so it's two pages. On this one you can write the information about the book and then this one you can take notes. I can already tell you I don't like that the stars are red because then when I fill it in with a black pen I have to actually try to stay inside like the already established lines. Well if it was already black or it was like slightly less of an opacity then I have the chance to like make my own lines. But depending on your style you could get like messy with it and you could go outside the lines or you could just fade it in however you want. I feel like I'll want to drive home this a bunch of times in this video but these are all my preferences and hopefully by learning my preferences and what I am going to care about it'll help you determine like which one is going to work for you because what is interesting to me may not be interesting to you. For example um, I do not care the date that I started and finished a book. I think just having one date on there would be fine. I don't like the categories. The categories are fiction, nonfiction, memoir, biography, or other. And I feel like if it just had a line to choose your own category from the get-go that would make more sense. But if you are somebody who traditionally reads a lot of Nonfiction, which I feel like memoir and biography are nonfiction. All of these are going to be for a very specific type of reader, like this page where you get to fill in your favorite authors and your favorite books. And then after that, it also asks you your favorite young adult books or your favorite children's books. Is already assuming that your favorite books and your favorite authors are not going to be of the young adult or children's variety. After that, it says my favorite places to read in a cafe at home, first of all. Did they not know what the pandemic 11 years ago? Points taken off. I'm not reading at a cafe or a library or on the train right now. It makes it more of an activity journal as opposed to just a reading journal, which is definitely something interesting. But everything in here is going to be pretty limiting just because it only gives you so many options. With it saying, inspired me to learn about these subjects, it's appealing to a certain type of reader who is probably reading more nonfiction, memoir, and biography. So you can talk about what you learned from the book and what you want to continue learning. So let's count how many reviews fit in here. I don't see it listed anywhere, but it might be in the description on the website. I think it's 50. For me, I read like 140 to 180 books a year. I would have to purchase three to four of these books if I wanted to write down every single book that I read. So I would have to be strategic about how I use it because spending $100 a year on a reading journal like this where the sections that are activity based would end up then being repetitive like that doesn't make the most sense for me. This one passed the pen test better than I could have imagined. I couldn't see it going through any of the pages. It didn't smear. I still don't love the paper but it was fine. There were some different quizzes and I couldn't fill out like any of them because I hadn't read the books listed. And then the last like 30 pages is all full of book recommendations. Final thoughts from my bibliophile. Don't take my rating to be the rating that I give it for just like general use, the average consumer. For me, this is like a one out of five for my purposes. I don't personally need a two page spread for my reviews. I don't prefer the hardcover. I think it was good to test it out, but I don't like it. It doesn't get as flat as I would prefer when I'm writing on it. I also don't like, I know this doesn't matter to like normal people, but I don't like the color. I feel like all reading journals are going to have some colors inside but especially when the inside is red and beige it just doesn't work for me. Like I said before there's not enough things to actually fill out and I don't like that I have to pick from a certain genre and like yeah I could write in my own. Yeah I could give more categories down here but I just don't love how this is all laid out in general. The pages in between the reviews are just not what I'm looking for. They don't lean towards the type of books that I pick up. This is for somebody who really wants to dive into what they learned from the books that they're reading. Somebody who takes reading really seriously and who has read a lot of classics in their life that's who this is perfect for. And that's not me. Though it does pass the does it fit in my purse test. So there's that. At the end of this whole video I'm going to compare some specific things between all four journals side by side like what it has to offer but that's just who I would recommend this for. Cool. 
It is now February and my book selection is this one from Owl Crate. This was a $19 journal with I think $15 shipping. I think this is maybe the type of item that you can buy separately from them but if you already have a subscription with them maybe it can be like included in boxes. I'm not sure how that all works but the price makes sense because it's not like mass produced like this is a company who is working with somebody to create a small amount so that's something you always have to keep in mind when you're ordering like paper products is the more that a company is able to like mass produce the cheaper it's going to be for them to create and the cheaper they can offer it to you so not that this one was exorbitantly priced but just something to remember and honestly i was expecting less quality so i'm pleasantly surprised i don't think that i prefer the rings but i won't know until i'm actually using it this feels like the type of agenda that i got in high school that has this soft cover I like the size of this. I definitely wouldn't want it any bigger. And the pages inside are colored, but like lightly, like in a nice muted way. You can tell they had like a specific number of colors um, because a lot of times when you print, you're paying per color basically. You only have a certain number that you're gonna wanna stick to. I haven't looked at this at all, but I saw the first page which is exactly what I do with my current bullet journal. And this is one of the pages that I think is really cool. And if I were to ever create a reading journal, I would want this. And the number of books here is appropriate, which I love. Because the page still looks cute, even if you can't color them all in. And I think that's important. And then it seems to be also just like a calendar, which is cool. Something about this is I don't know that this is something that they have long term or if they're planning on continuing creating these or how it really works. I know that they sell a lot of items that they might have included in their boxes, but then you can also buy them separately. So I have no idea like the timeline of something like this, but I saw it in my Instagram feed and I just had to order one. And then you've got a monthly TBR and then a weekly planner. I like that there's a to-do list because if I was using this as a video planner and book planner, like all of my bookish stuff, it could all fit reasonably in here. So after a month and then all of the weeks there are sections for book reviews so there are 15 slots per month and then there's fun little things you can fill out like favorite quotes and then a little wrap up and then it starts over it doesn't give you extra activities like lists of books that you want to read in your lifetime or your favorite classics or whatever and then there's a spot at the end for your best books and worst books of the year so this is cool because the calendar and the weeks aren't labeled so you can label them yourself so you can start this easily in the middle of the year you don't have to have it run the entire year i don't feel like this note section is wide enough to really write anything significant in it but i think it's pretty and i think it's fun and i'm excited to use it and see how it folds up so for the mini book reviews themselves i love how open this is there aren't a ton of things to select you get to write the genre yourself there's a space for the title, the author, your date started and finished again, which like maybe people want. Also a spot for how many pages and then three little lines for your thoughts. And then you can also select if it was a physical ebook, audiobook, um, and then the rating section. I really love the font they used in here, but I think the stars needed to be a little bigger or a little clearer or something. And then probably my favorite page is the fact that they offer a monthly wrap up section where you can say how many books you read, all the genres you read, how many pages, your favorite books, least favorite books, and anything you didn't finish. And they definitely give you enough lines and enough space to put everything that you need. My final thoughts on this one is pretty much as expected. I thought that I wouldn't like the loop binding and I don't, but I didn't know for sure because I haven't used one like this in at least 10 years. While it has benefits, the loops really hinder the ability to make everything look perfect. And I'm really glad I started with these two because they could not be more different. The My Biblio file is more of a 
once you've read something take down some notes and this is more of a preparation before you read i would recommend this most for who i think kind of was the target demographic for owl crate which is like bookstagrammers and booktubers because those are the types of people who are buying owl crate receiving owl crate and posting about it on social media it also accounted for how much we read so there is room for 180 reviews in here with that said it's split up to have three per page so there are a lot shorter of reviews which works for me because i wouldn't use this as something that i refer back to for years it's kind of a jot down your thoughts so when it's time to review in a video at the end of the month you have a couple key things to talk about you know this did pass my pen test with flying colors but does not pass my fit in my purse test i really liked the page at the beginning where you could color in books though i realized that it says favorite books on it and like i don't have that many favorite books so i would just use it to track what i'm reading throughout the year although it is a little too small to color in in like a really clean way with the type of markers that i traditionally use in my bullet journal also it is split up by month so like those 15 reviews that you have for each month are organized like in the months so if you read more than 15 one month and less than 15 i don't know if it would bother anybody else to have to like just write it down in the next month that definitely wouldn't bother me and i think that was the best way to do it rather than having just like a whole chunk of sections to write your reviews like i like it being in each month there's so much space to plan what you're gonna read how many pages you read a to-do list for like taking books to pictures or filming videos overall I'm gonna give this a three and a half out of five. I really do like that the text in here is black. So when I write with black or blue, it like kind of fits in better, even though there is still the beige and red. There's also greens and blues and grays. So it's a nice mix of color. I think I would have preferred all of the writing space to be white as opposed to some of it's white and some of it's this, it's like a grayish pencil does not show up great on these pages and i really just can't get over the binding like honestly that loses an entire star even though i will say i find this to be good quality i think it would hold up well as long as you're not like trying to bring it everywhere you go that like this just so easily is gonna pop right out of the loops the loops also make things hard to stack if you want to do that another one of my issues with the loops is that the pages are always gonna be just like kind of all over the place loops are just my nemesis i'm sorry i keep talking about them and i did realize that the first journal that i did kind of has a page like if you really wanted to have a page like this where you colored in the books as you were reading them they it does have that on the inside pages if you if you really wanted to go for it that's not the point of it i'm sure but you could do it okay i have march's journal right here it's called bookaholic a reading journal i liked the black and the gold i wanted to check out a more inexpensive one that's like more accessible this one is on amazon it was nine dollars um rob has amazon prime i hope it's clear that obviously when i'm talking about like affordability and accessibility the most like inexpensive and reasonable option for the majority of human beings is like to just use a notebook that you already have or just like use loose leaf paper that you already have go to the dollar store and buy like a dollar journal and just like make your own like kind of design something i really wanted to make sure that i was trying was some different bindings so this one is just like fully I don't even know what you would call it surged and i'm interested to see how it opens i have yeah i have a thing about it laying flat so i definitely want to make sure that it's nice to write in and in here we start with a little this journal belongs to page and then it looks to be solely for book reviews so there is no extra content there's no activity pages it's a super straightforward design and we have a whole bullet journal page like every every other page so you can do anything you want here you can draw things you can make boxes you can just write out your thoughts it has space for the title the author 
you can say if it was paperback, hardback, ebook, or audiobook. And then fiction or nonfiction, and then there's a space for genre underneath, which is nice. I like this spot that says recommended by or why I picked up this book. If you read a lot and you get a lot of recommendations from that around the internet and or in your real life from like real <laughs> human people and you like to keep track of that sort of thing, that's fun. Date started, date finished. Oh, and then the ratings. It's not just one rating. That's very interesting. So you can rate things like the writing style, the characters, plot development, originality, engagingness, insightfulness, comprehensiveness, impactfulness, and then your overall rating. And then you can sum up the book in three words and put your brief summary. Interesting. There's like you, a summary of the introduction, development, twist, and conclusion. The favorite parts, new words learned. That's fun. And then you can put your whole review doodles, reflection, feelings, realizations over here. Great, straightforward. I'm sure it was less expensive to print because it is like a deep gray. I like the font they chose. The only thing that I'm seeing right off the bat is you can definitely see through the pages. But when, I think that's to be expected because you're paying less for a product. So I, my like number one thing that I, think of when paying more for a bullet journal is quality of paper. So we'll have to do my pen test and see how it goes. I like that it has the page number at the bottom so I don't have to count the number of reviews you can fit in here. There's room for 54 reviews in here so if you're somebody who reads a book a week you will want to purchase one of these every year. But it's definitely a nice size for like stackability or to sit on a shelf. And I mean that comes with thinner pages so you're gonna have a thinner like journal overall. But since it's not divided up in any other way besides just reviews you could use this one journal for like 10 years of reading or you can use four of these in a year. So that's nice. Um, what I've been doing is each journal I am only using for that month but when I'm filling it out, I'm putting that months of reviews in the section that it would be in the journal if I had filled out the journal for the entire year. So like I'm going to skip to review like 30 or whatever and start here. So at the end of this, whatever journal is my favorite, I can begin from the beginning and fill it out fully for the entire like four months and then continue using whichever was my favorite for the rest of the year. I think I pretty much covered everything that's inside it. I like the sections where you get to talk about values, themes, ideologies portrayed, and I like how there are shaded sections and it kind of breaks it all up. But overall, this isn't a reading journal that I would use, and I realized that my rating scale is a little bit skewed already because I gave that other one one star, even though like, if you take everything into account quality wise and all of the insides like it's not a one star objectively but would i use it no i wouldn't be perfectly happy using this as my reading journal for all time so i gave it a one <laughs> which means i also have to give this a one because i wouldn't use it it's no doubt more simplistic than any of the other ones and i think that's nice and it's straightforward and you know what you're like getting into but for my purposes i like a little bit more of a mix between reviews and something else. So if some of the ideas from this or this were implemented in here, even though I didn't love those two anyway, then it could be something that I use consistently moving forward. But I also just can't get over the paper quality. It's fine in a pinch and I recommend it, but it's not ideal. But one star seems really harsh and I know that and I acknowledge that and I'm sorry, I've messed up the, the ranking, the rating, everything. Next up is the reading journal from Book Riot. It's called Bookmarks, a reading tracker. I think they actually have two. I don't know if one is old and one is newer. They're like for two different intents. But this one was $20 um, Canadian. I got it from Indigo. And right off the bat, like I expected this to be the highest quality because of the price and because it's from Book Riot, which is a website I really enjoy. I get good book recommendations from. They have a lot of different like endeavors. And I want to like how it looks, but I don't. Really none of the reading journals have been like my perfect taste. This one like I like the color scheme and I like the idea. I like the illustration, but it's not like what I would go for if I were purely picking out like a cover that I wanted. But this one has a lot of promise. It has my favorite binding of all of them. Um, it has the little strings to mark your place. And it looks like half of this, whoa, no. More than three quarters of this is a bullet journal. So that's definitely 
appealing I think to some people but could be a turnoff for some people so let's start from the beginning from the library of very cute again it has a specific color scheme on the inside so if you don't love greens and blues and it doesn't go with like the pens that you're gonna use you might not love it but most of this it looks like is intended to be used as a bullet journal so it has light blue dots and I think it'll be fine so it starts out it's kind of a does it say anywhere it looks like a guided journal so it has these little title pages and like explanations of how to use each section literary holidays and then it says templates the following pages contain some of our favorite ways to set up and use your journal start by filling them out when you're done copy the template over to the blank pages and keep going i think this is a great option for so many people because it's like a build your own reading journal you pick what you actually want out of the reading journal it gives you examples so there's like a reading log or there's book reviews or longer book reviews or longer book reviews and then once you decide what you like and what you want to use it for you can build your own in the back so i think this definitely works for people who like already find bullet journals the perfect way to track your reading and then it gives you like some examples um for me somebody who's super neurotic um no matter how hard i try to set up my pages they're never gonna look exactly like the ones in the front and that's gonna drive me nuts so oh that's tough i really do enjoy the idea and i think it makes a lot of sense so i can't really talk about the pages that they offer and like how good their offering is and like how many options they have for what to fill out for each book because it's not like this isn't all they're giving you they're giving you a guide and then you can take it wherever you want so for here it says author stats and then you're meant to fill it out for like all the nationalities that you're reading from and then check off as you go but then like you can only fill it out like you can only read from six authors before you filled it up and then for gender and for age range and for year of publication and for genre there is a different amount of boxes for all of them so like i know it says like once you fill out these pages you can go create your own but like i'm gonna run out of space to fill like how many female authors i read way before i you know fill out all of my check marks for whatever highest genre that i read it gives you title author publisher ah publisher that's a good one to include publication date format discovery so like where you learned about it from uh date started and date finished again these stars are too colorful and small for me to like be happy with how they're gonna fill in but again when you do your own page you can choose however you want to draw the star to fill in oh there's a book bingo challenge yourself to read different types of books throughout the scheme of bingo this is definitely fun and then this is favorites shelf so it wants you to color in the books i think that's great inspo for future pages as well spot for favorite quotes there's also a word bank and a lending library so you can keep track of books that you borrowed a whole page for doodling characters and then this is an example of what a book club page would look like there's a page about how to start your own book club so it's definitely oh and there's stuff in the back too hold on okay so there's a chunk at the back as well that isn't bullet journal pages my bad this is the read harder reference page i think read harder is the book riot like reading challenge so this has a list of challenges and then um book riot suggestions which is nice there's a lot of different genres covered here even cookbooks and poetry and that's it oh and then you can tear this out and it's a bookmark that's cute these pages are super thick i don't anticipate anything bleeding through and also i feel like you would only ever buy maybe i'm wrong but like one of these like once i got introduced to these and i learned which example i actually wanted to use in the bullet journal section after this like i'm just using an actual bullet journal so as expected this one ended up being my favorite but i still don't completely love it because i think it's more for like the artistically inclined i know i have had a bullet journal in the past but i don't currently have the time or desire 
to really build all of my own pages, which is what this inspires, which I think is really awesome. The pages lay really flat. I do find that there's a little too much text in these sections. Like you can't go from edge to edge of the page because there's always gonna be something there, or at least for most of the pages there is something there. I think this is great for inspiration. I think this was a probably likely a response because I know that they had, um, Book Riot had a reading journal in the past. I might actually be able to pick that up and try that out and we can do a whole nother round of this because I'm having fun. But maybe it's more just like book reviews and that's the whole book and to have a little bit more freedom perhaps they offered this second option that's what i i feel might be a thing both of these last two don't quite pass the purse test but are almost there and overall i really really love the quality the feel of this one i don't know if we really need any final stats but i'm gonna do them anyway we're gonna start with the nerdy kind of overview. So here's all the reading trackers laid out side by side and the price point for each one. Here are their dimensions in case that's something that you care about. I give each of them a quality rating. This isn't overall, this is like the actual physical quality of the item. So my bibliophile I gave a B because the hardcover has started to crack and if you want to open it up far enough you're completely breaking all of the spines and you're losing a bit of the integrity in order to write on it properly. I also gave the reading planner by Owlcrate a B. These are good quality ratings just not great. So with the loop it's not perfect and the paper is prone to tear through the loops if you're not careful. Bookaholic reading journal I gave a C I think for pretty obvious reasons and then bookmarks a reading track by Book Riot got an A. It feels like a very sturdy and well-made product. I wanted to put up the number of potential reviews as well in case you missed them. So my bibliophile and bookaholic both have the potential for about a year's worth of reading if you read a book a week. And the Owlcrate Reading Planner has the most potential reviews with 180. Bookmarks is hard to say because with the entire thing almost being bullet pages, the number of potential reviews is truly infinite. For the number one benefits of each journal, I said my bibliophile with its activity pages and thoughtful prompts, it helps you stay engaged and makes you think and gives you things to do. For the Owl Crate one, I love that it can double as an agenda and the plenty of reviews is definitely a plus for me. The Bookaholic journal is the best price point. There's so many different prompts and things to guide you with your reviews and then the bullet pages is definitely useful for doing whatever you want with those. Obviously that also exists in the bookmarks one, but I also added that all the inspirational prompts and designs is cool to see and it is the most aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. For downfalls, I put my bibliophile file is out of date. There are certain things in the back regarding book prizes that are old. Old names, old winners, also some wording and different things are just a little out of date. Uh, in my opinion it has a little bit of a lack of design and you wouldn't necessarily want to repurchase this because there are so many pages that you would just be writing the same thing you wrote in the last one. If it had the potential for like three times the amount of reviews, I think it would be fine, but this isn't something that I could see somebody buying like for each year. For the Owl Crate Planner, obviously the binding. The beige pages just are limiting for what type of stationery you can use. And then some of the sections are a little too small, a little too skinny and don't have enough lines for fully formed thoughts, especially if you are somebody who writes relatively largely. For Bookaholic, the paper quality is its biggest downfall. Um, some of the spacing between letters, um, the kerning, is something that might drive people a little nuts because it's not completely consistent throughout the page. And there is a little bit of wasted space with the explanations of what the reviews want from you. I think this could have benefited from a couple pages at the beginning, like we've seen in the bookmarks one, where there's a guided page at the beginning to tell you what some things mean in future pages. That could have saved some space. And then in the final one, I just think it has such a specific audience. It's the most difficult to recommend broadly. And it's the least traditional reading journal, which is beneficial for something unique, but it is a bit of a downfall if you're buying this expecting a traditional reading journal. And for me, its biggest downfall is the consistency and organization. I love all the guided pages and I love the instruction. I love the inspiration, but it just feels so chaotic because it gives you all those pages in the beginning. And then like you have to decide one of the designs to take forward or if you're going to take multiple designs moving forward so there's just no organization and it doesn't have a consistent look throughout it which won't bother some people
pupil, but definitely is not for me. So those are the facts about each journal. And now who, I think it's like, who is this reading journal for? Who would I recommend it to? So the fact is I didn't find my perfect reading journal after all of this. So we're gonna have to do a round two. Let me know what other reading trackers you know about and I'll pick them up and test it for the both of us. I would most recommend this one for bookstagrammers, booktubers, people who want to track and do things outside of just their reading stats. And also people who are relatively artistically inclined but like me have a hard time just starting and coming up with your own inspiration this is definitely something i could see gifting somebody so if like your child is just getting into like bookstagramming or reading a lot or maybe they're doing bookish tiktoks this would be a fun gift i think the other one i could see gifting is this one and this is more for an academic in your life Maybe that's also your child, but I picture this as something that I would gift like an aunt or cousin who I know is reading with more of a purpose rather than the people that I tend to surround myself in my reading community. But if your reading community is like the classics readers and the analytical readers, the mostly nonfiction readers, those who are reading for school, like this would be a fun gift for sure. Now I know that I'm being, like I know that I'm taking my own perspective and not really thinking about anybody else's preferences, but I just couldn't see gifting these because they aren't the same quality. Even though I find this to be objectively good quality. I can't get over it. I'll never get over it. I'm sorry. This just feels more like a school supply and not something conducive to giving to somebody as a gift. Just like I would never gift a book that was bound like this. If you yourself are a bookstagrammer, booktuber, book talker, etc., I could definitely see picking this up for yourself. And then this one just does the job if you are on a little bit more of a budget. It definitely accomplishes what it's set out to do. And though it's not the highest quality and isn't gonna hold up forever, there are some good merits about this. Like I think that the person who designed it did a good job of organizing it and doing the bullet journal page. And also you can get a whole bunch of these for cheaper, so they stack well and they don't have a lot of fluff. So it would be, I think, a normal thing to have a whole set of these throughout your reading life journey. I really thought that there was gonna be a dud in here and a clear winner in here, but if you combined all four of these, it would be my favorite reading journal. This is the best structured. If you took this binding and this whole size integrated this content and this cover and honestly this font and this whole star rating system then it would be my favorite as far as which one i'm going forward with i don't think any of them i think i'm gonna try some more i don't want these to go to waste though so i am going to be donating these three because i think that i can remove the pages from here that I used. And then for these two, I think you can still get a lot of use out of them, even though a couple pages are filled in. So I'm gonna stick like a little post-it in the front page, just hopefully the person looking at it will see that it is like a little filled out and they get a little bit of a warning. I don't think I can do that with this one because I used up like all of the unique pages. So I will just use this as my bullet journal for as long as it takes me to fill it up. Let me know what you think about anything that I talked about in here. Again, any ideas for other reading journals that you would like to see reviewed. I'd be so happy to do that and I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching and hang out with me. Bye.